morning everyone. Today's our topic is female catheterization. Catheterization means it is the process of inserting urinary catheter into bladder through the urethra. It is the insertion of the urinary catheter. What we are inserting it is the urinary catheter to the way of to the bladder, urinary bladder through the urethra. Urethra means it is the opening for passing urine. Okay. So, the catheter which is inserting to the inside of the bladder through the urethra for draining or for withdrawing the urine from the bladder. That process is known as catheterization. Okay, so catheterization is the process of inserting urinary catheter into the bladder through the urethra to drain the urine from urinary bladder. This is, that is called as catheterization. So here we are going to study about the female catheterization. There are different types of catheters are available for the catheterization. So we will see what are the different catheter which is available. Indwelling or Foley's catheter. Indwelling or Foley's catheter. Intermittent catheter. Robinson's catheter. Turk catheter. Suprapipid catheter. Silicon catheter. Core catheter. Condom catheter catheter. Okay. Indwelly or four is intermittent catheter, Robinson's catheter, tar catheter, suprapopic catheter, silicon catheter, cord catheter and condom catheter. So these are the main catheter which is available for the catheterization. According to the use of the catheterization we will use any one of the catheter as per the physician order. Indications of catheterization. That means when we can apply the catheterization and in which condition the patient should get the catheterization. Okay. So the first condition we can say that is neurological conditions or neurological injury. When there is a problem related to nerve, what will happen? The impulses will not pass from the bladder to the brain. So the control of the urination cannot occur in the neurological condition. So the catheterization can be done for the patient who is under neurological condition or neurological injury. Next is outlet obstruction. What is this outlet obstruction? Obstruction means blockage. So blockage occurs in the base or neck of the bladder. That condition is known as outlet obstruction. So it is mainly seen in the elder man. Okay. And maybe it is due to the enlargement of the prostate glands or the uh, stones in the bladder or due to any scar formation in the bladder. So it is outlet obstruction that is the blockage which is occurring in the base or neck of the bladder. It will reduce the flow of urine to the urethra. So the patient cannot pass the urine. So what we can apply? The catheterization we can apply for the patient who is under outlet obstruction. Intractable incontinence that means to control incontinence. Intractable means to control, to control incontinence. Incontinence means what? It is the involuntary passage of urine. They can, the patient cannot control the sphincter and whenever they are doing any strenuous activity, when they are sneezing, coughing, what will do? The urine will pass involuntary. That condition is known as incontinence, involuntary passage of urine. So when there is an incontinence, we can use the catheterization when other all the methods which is failure to control the incontinence. Okay? So that is known as intractable incontinence. Palliative care. Palliative care is the care which is given for the patients under the life threatening condition. Right? So whenever we are taking care of the palliative patients we can use the catheterization for managing the symptoms. Chronic urinary retention. Urinary retention means inability to empty the bladder. The patient feel to pass urine but the urine will be accumulated in the bladder. It cannot come out. That condition is known as urinary retention. Chronic urinary retention is there means the patient should get the catheterization to remove the urine which is present in the bladder. Tissue viability or preserving skin integrity. When there is a tissue damage or injury in the tissues which is surrounded by the perineal region or in the legs, what will happen? When there is a patient passing the urine, the urine can touching these injuries or the wound. That can irritate the patient and that can also lead for the chance for infection. 
So when there is a tissue damage or the injury or surgical bone in the perineal region or in the labs, we can apply the catheterization for avoiding the infections and irritations for the patient. Articles which is using for catheterization. What are they? Single use disposable gown. The single use disposable gown is using for the patient. So after the procedure, it will be soiled that we can discard if it is single use disposable gown. Next is catheter. We have learned different types of catheter according to the physician order. Which catheter we have to use that catheter is needed for the catheterization. Next is sterile dressing pack. So the sterile dressing pack which is included the sterile artery, sterile gauze piece, sterile cotton balls, everything. Okay. And another is sterile gloves. Sterile gloves is needed for the nurse who is going to do the catheterization. And one extra piece of non-sterile gloves. We can take the help from the assistant. So those who are helping us for doing the catheterization, they can use the non-sterile gloves. So one non-sterile gloves can be in the articles. And another is anesthetic gel or lubricant gel. Okay. So anesthetic gel or lubricant gel we can apply in the catheterization. If it is using anesthetic gel, we need the doctor prescription. And the lubricating gel is using for the easy insertion of catheter. And drainage bag. Drainage bag is for drawing the urine from the catheter to the bag. That is known as drainage bag. Then we need 10 ml syringe which is containing 0.9% of saline solution for balloon. And another is kidney tray. One non sterile kidney tray is needed for discard the cotton balls or soiled items which is for discarding that is kidney tray. Procedure step by step we can see first step is introduce yourself. So introducing yourself is the better way to communicate with the patient. Okay. So once you introduce yourself the patient will feel comfortable and relaxed and they will make a friendly approach to you. So you can just start with introducing yourself. You can just ask hi how are you? What's your name? I'm, my name is this. Okay. And in this way, you can just introduce yourself. Okay. And another is verbal communication. Same. By continuing the introducing yourself, you are asking their name. Right. So in this way, we are confirming their name. Their name is this. And for this patient only, we have to do the catheterization. And again, we can check the file. Okay. So whether the patient has said the right name and in the file, the patient name is right or the condition is right. Everything we can check in the file okay after introducing what you can do you can just explain the procedure hi i'm going to do this procedure that means catheterization this is the procedure which is involving this type of this you have to cooperate in this way and this is the position you have to maintain everything you can explain in the explain procedure okay so the patient will feel relaxed and suddenly you are going and doing something, they will feel anxiety, right? So everything you should follow in systematic way. And another is gather equipment. After explain the procedure, you can gather all the equipments which is needed for the procedure. Okay, well, already we have learned what are the articles which is needed for the catheterization. So all articles you can just gather near to the bed. And another is check the type and size of catheter. We have learned different types of catheter. So with the which type of catheter we are using, whether it is the same catheter we are going to insert that you have to check and the size of the catheter also you have to check. And another is you can ask for allergy. Once the patient is having any allergy related to latex or lubricant or silocaine gel, gel. so these kind of things you have to ask before going to apply the gel. Next is hand washing. Before doing any of the procedure, you should have to do the procedure hand washing for avoiding the entering of the microorganisms inside the body. Okay. And another is positioning. For the catheterization, which position we are using? That is dorsal recommend position for the female. Dorsal recommend position. Okay. And for the female, we are using supine position. So before going to do the catheterization, you can cover the patient with the permission of the patient. Okay? That means only the area where we are going to do that part only we have to explore or we have to open. Other parts we can cover with the permission of patient. Another is clean the perineal region. Next you have to clean the perineal region. 
always clean the perineal region from the less contaminated area to more contaminated area. If you are cleaning from the more contaminated area, what will happen? The microorganism will spread to the other part will be more. Okay? So you have to clean always from the less contaminated area to more contaminated area. In this, the rectal region is the more contaminated area and urinary meters is the less contaminated area. Right? So you can just clean the perineal region from the upwards to the downwards. Okay? From upwards to the downwards. And you have to use only one cotton ball for one swabbing. Okay? So first you have to clean the perineal region, the labia majora, the labia majora with the one cotton ball and you have to discard it. And another labia majora, left side of the labia majora, you have to clean with another cotton ball and you have to discard it. So each part of the perineal region clean by the each cotton ball. Strip off, repeat the cotton ball for the next. Open sterile packing and the Catheter. After cleaning the perineal region, you can open the sterile package and catheter. Then you have to go through the gloving process, then apply the lubricant for the catheter from tip of the catheter to 4 cm. And you should always think that you should not touch anywhere of the catheter which is going to inside of the bladder. Okay? So that may cause any infection for the patient. So you should not touch the tape on which part of the catheter is going to inside of the bladder. That part you should not touch. Okay. So you should keep the distance where you are going to insert. So after that you can insert 5 to 6 cm of the catheter inside the bladder. So once the urine has started to flow, you can insert further 3 to 5 cm of catheter. Then you have to go through the inflate balloon A by injecting the sterile water to the balloon pot. Okay. After that you can measure the amount of urine, how much urine has expelled from the bladder and you can record it up file. Here the picture for better understanding. Okay. So for doing the catheterization you have to hold the labia major or the perineal region in this way. You shall use the thumb and the fingers by separating the labia majora. You have to slightly make the labia majora upwards and you have to separate by using the thumb and fingers. Okay? So you will get a proper visualization of the urethra, the urinary meters open. Okay? So you should have the anatomical knowledge regarding this. Then only you can insert properly where it should go. Okay? So you should know that is here the urethra, here the vaginal opening and here the rectum opening okay so the urethra opening only you have to insert the catheter or urinary meters is the opening for inserting catheter okay so in this way you have to hold you can clean the perineal region from the upwards to downwards and only one swabbing for one region one swab you have to discard and one swab you have to discard so one swabbing for one place or one region then you have to hold in this way and you should know the opening whatever it is there. There is urethra, vagina and rectum opening is there. You have to insert the catheter to urethra by holding in this way. Okay. And let's see what is about the catheter. So in the catheter you can see the two port is here. Two port. One port is for ballooning. Another port is for urinary drainage port. Okay. This port is for connecting the urinary bag. So one port is for ballooning, another port is for connecting urinary drainage bag. Okay? And this is the opening. This is the part which is going to inside of the bladder. Here the opening that is bladder opening. From this opening only the urine will come from the bladder. Okay? And another is balloon. Here the balloon. Okay? So I told you here the balloon port. After inserting the catheter, once the urine starts to flow, what you have to do? So, what you have to do? After inserting the catheter to the urinary bladder, you should insert the sterile water through the balloon port. Okay, you should insert the sterile or normal saline water through here. Okay, so this water will go through the catheter and here ballooning will occur. Okay, this part will get balloon. Okay. That is known as balloon. After insertion of the catheter, you should insert the saline water through the bladder portal and it will reach to the balloon and the ballooning process will occur. So what will happen? What is this ballooning? 
So it will not allow the catheter to come out of the bladder. It will be stuck inside the bladder itself and patient will feel comfort due to this balloon. And once you are removing the catheterization, you should follow the sterile methods and you should withdraw this saline water. Okay, you should take a syringe and you should aspirate the water from here to here and the bulging or the ballooning will be narrowing. Then you can take the catheter from the urinary bladder. And second complication can occur for the urinary catheterization. Once doing the catheterization, it should be sterile and hygienic manner and the catheter care is needed and the frequent checking of the catheterization is needed. Everything should be careful. Otherwise, some of the complication can be occur. So, let's see what are the incontinence of urine. That means involuntary passage of the urine can occur. Infection can occur due to the end of the microorganisms. Sepsis can occur due to the presence of continuous infection. And urethral injury can occur due to the friction of inserting catheter. And another is thin breakdown can occur. Hematuria that is the blood in urine can occur. And bladder cancer, the continuous uh, applying of the catheterization or that can lead to the continuous infection or inflammation that also can lead to the complication as the bladder cancer. So, today complication can occur in the catheterization. So, the catheterization should be done in hygienic and sterile manner and the catheter care is very important and regular checkup of the catheter is necessary. If you have any doubt, please write in the comment box. Thank you.